words. We're saying that in the days of Achashverosh himself, there was already a level of Achashverosh, which means Chash. Chash is silence, which is Keser. And then we said Rosh even is the manifestation of that Keser in the world. Like, in the, like we said yesterday, like the three levels of Klippa, even, even like the lower levels of Klippa. So a Chash in this... Okay, let me just clarify. Chash in its source is Keser, but Chash down here is silence, which is lower than speech. And these three like... No, so the chash is the just klipas noga, but then the rosh, a chash verosh, the rosh is the gimel klipas atameis, which means that if you go to the level of chash above, right, the level of keser basically, it manifests itself as klipa down here, okay. So, what we're seeing, however, is that a chash verosh already, like his kingdom is already seemingly at the late state of the lottery. Because that level of hitting the Kester is where the Achris Vereshis are equal, which is basically what we're saying is the lottery, right? That there's like no, there's no real clear choice over beginning and end, high and low, last and first. And therefore, we, the question that arose is why does Haman even need to throw a lottery? Because he's already, the whole, whole generation was already like in a place where the Jewish people were being under the, under the domination of the, of the, right? The Achashverosh was the king. He was he was he ruled the whole world with the level of Achashverosh, which was basically, you know, protruding these three these the the, the clippers in full force. So he said that really it's because he was going to go higher than Achashverosh. That's what Haman was after. There was a level of whatever Achashverosh really represents. It only sounds like the lottery. But the lottery is even beyond that. He even though he was in the kingdom of Achashverosh, he had to on top of that throw a lottery. And then, Olive's question is, how is Achashverosh really not the full thing? If, it, if Achris and Reishis are his, and it's like a sort of equality of, of all levels, why is that not the lottery? So he said, because his name still indicates levels. In other words, the fact that it even says Achris Vereshis in his name means that there are levels that are somewhat apparent. It's just that by him, those levels are all equaled out. But not necessarily that, that intrinsically everything about him equalizes out the levels and we also see that in the in like the sort of histoshalus that appears in conjunction with him because it says that at his party there was different levels of how much where people got to sit and basically it was all divided into you know the chatzar the, the the courtyard and the garden and the house and the servants and the and the regular people basically so we see that there was not a total equation of everyone e- equaling high and low that was associated with him which means that he, to, and the way we explained it was that, yes, in his own place, the Achris and the Reishis are equal. In other words, in the place of like the Kesser. But this experience of the Kesser, not every time you experience the Kesser the way the Kesser actually is above, that the experience of his level was that, that it shown to some people more and some people less. So there was still like a breakdown of some you know, preservation of the Ishtalshalus that comes from merely the level of Achashverosh if you don't go and reach beyond that to the true lottery. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. So is that why sometimes reality appears completely arbitrary and random? And then at other times there does seem to be a level of justice, of real justice. Um, and, uh, yeah. And light. Over, yeah. Uh, winning over dark. Yeah. Yeah, when you see, exactly. Hashem basically, look, we're all sort of perpetually living in the kingdom of Hashverosh, unfortunately, right? Because we didn't ever get out of that 100%, right? I mean, let's say we did, they rebuilt the temple, you know, but after they broke the temple again, we're in Hashverosh uh, uh, times. I'm saying, and, and, oh, and way temporary. before, you know, say we've been in the Hashverosh times since the destruction of the second temple, which means that the Goyim are ruling the world, and the Klippas are dominant. They, they rule over the, the Kedusha. You know, so that's because there's no distinction between good and bad, basically. The, the, the justice system doesn't ap- clearly and apparently always win. So that's to say that it never breaks through and there's like sort of signs of it. There are, because as we're saying right now, actually, a chashverosh is not as crazy as the lottery, right? When it's really completely hefker and nothing matters. If a Chashverosh ruled, as we're going to see inside in a second, there is still a little room for the Ishtalshlus, and in the Ishtalshlus, there is some justice. So even in the levels of Chashverosh, we're going to see inside, 
that wasn't enough to, to fulfill Haman's plan of wiping out the Jews. Just being in a realm of Achashverosh, even though there's a heck of a lot of room to receive evil in the world, because there's an imbalance, but it's not a complete negation of the Seder Rishtal Shalus, in which case the Jews still have like a, a spot there, and for, for sure a spot, right? A good spot. So this is why Haman felt he had to go beyond that. As long as they're Israel and not something other than that. As long as they're acting like Israel, you're saying? Like, that's, that was the thing that we were discussing a few days before. That. But nonetheless, even if they're... You're saying yeah, Israel is, is a mitzvot, you know, Rimon full of mitzvot. Right. Not all of Israel is like that. Yeah, everyone. It's a, it's a, it's a, on the no, country. It's potential there. No, it says, it says that... It's so an am- Amaharetz, is, is like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's referring to an Amaharetz. Like, What's it's saying Amaharetz? that Afilu Poshe Yisrael, even <coughs> wanton intentional sinners, are filled like mitzvahs with, so with a Jews who do wicked things. Yes, the yeah? they're You're filled with mitzvahs. They're filled with mitzvahs. Yeah, they're filled with mitzvahs. Not only do they have a good yeah, soul in there, because they're going around, basically, you know, they're not... They're, 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 for the mo- Look, there is such a thing as a Rasha Varalo in the Tanya. He's, he's like a completely evil man that he cannot access any st- like strand of his good self, right? <laughs> but that's like, honestly, if there's even one in a generation, it's kind of like a Tzadik Vitovlo. It's like a very rare breed of human being. Most of, no, it is. Right, right. Most people are not Rasha Viralo, they're Rasha Vitovlo, which means they're, they're, first of all, they're filled with regret. They're constantly like sort of back, bouncing back and forth in their own conscience, like feeling the pain of like what they've done to other people. I mean, mo- almost every Jew I know is like that. I mean, whether they right. do mitzvahs, they don't right. do mitzvahs. They're busy constantly running around trying to do as good as they can in life. You know, they don't even know what mitzvahs are. So like you can strike that off. They're just like, they're, 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 they're tinok shanishba. They're basically captured, you know, what do you call it? They're uh, kidnapped, kidnapped children. children. So besides the fact that they have no idea what they're doing in terms of like the religion, but their whole daily life is basically a life of like striving for good and tr- being the best moral <coughs> citizen. I mean, I don't know any wicked people. Seriously. So, I mean, this is always how it's been. Jews are basically just we good. We done, you know, if it's right. done for rape. What? Sitting in prison. Listen, no I'm not saying that everyone's like, oh, you know, not doing any averas also. But they're doing plenty of mitzvahs. Even that guy. I guarantee you could make it. I'm not, it doesn't justify the bad. There. Everyone has a, has, a, has a laundry list, you know. But you've got, he's filled with mitzvahs like a pomegranate for sure. You know, for he sure. took about himself. For sure. The leadership of the old Jewish people, okay, he screws up. Yeah, he's not a tzaddik, he's not a bainani. Agreed. That's not what we're, just, that's not like what's on the table right now. It's the question is whether he's filled with mitzvahs like a pomegranate. And he is. Even the worst than that is. Anyway, just be, the Torah says so. Um, okay. Must be true. So, let's try and... Uh, Let's try and figure it all out here. So we left off. Where did we leave off? Oh, we're in Zion, the end of Zion, right? Or in the middle of Zion? Levi, congratulations on being the only book around here from this year. Can you do? Yeah. Still filled with myths like the and all those guys. Great guys, great guys. <laughs> so he says like this. Okay, so okay, we got, oh, we got to the bracket, right? Masha inkim bechin is a goral, right? So if you want to take it from inside, I have copies here. You want to copy? Anyone wants a copy? Yeah. I happen to know the office. All, All right, base. so we're taking it from page Kuf Tzadik Dalit, <coughs> right in the middle of that big paragraph um, at the end of the bracket. And the first first word is the Acharis. So he says, Masha Ink, it's always, what did we just say? That basically, that even though by Achashverosh himself, this is a level of the end of the beginning or him, but the extension beyond him, outside of his place, that experience is not is not total. It's not a, there's not a complete equation between all levels in the reality that comes extended from a chashverus only inside of his, his own being. What is chashverus? A chashverus is the is the king of uh, Persia okay. in this Purim story. Okay. So Masha enkim b'chinas agoral, but this sort of uh, this. Uh, sort of putting Kesser on slightly a lesser level that we just spoke about, it's not completely equal. This is not so when it comes to the Goral. There you go. 
There is not even such a thing to begin with as first and last. A guru is the lottery, right? It's not. It's not that the first and the last are equal. There's no such thing as first and last. It goes to a place where it just there's, it, you lose any shred of the seder Rishtal shalus. Kamuvan mize, which is understood from the fact shagora who bichlal bishnei devarim shavi, and where do we sort of indicate that, that is the case? We brought an example of the goral of Yom Kippur that they had to be two totally equal goats. Right? That they had to be the same, looking the same, and the same size, and the same amount of money, etc. Because it's not relevant to say that there's even levels that you're, that you're n- negating. Right? There's no levels. They're exactly the same. And that's the level of the goal. There has to be total equality. And therefore, there's really is no such thing as high and low. <laughs> so just like there's no th- such thing as first and last when it comes to this goro, which is up and down, high and low, the same is true, therefore, when it comes to holy and non-holy. Right? This is basically a continuation of what I was saying we're going to see inside a, m- a minute ago. That when it comes to the level of chashverosh, Yesh chiluk ben kedusha l'sitra achra. There still is a first and last, which means there's a difference between holiness and the sitra achra, right? There, it's still a, it's still a recognizable thing. It's just that we're going to say that those things we're not going to give precedence to one over the other. But we know there's, there's kedusha and we know there's sitra achra. We're going to try and equate them. Shemitzad haroma mushlo. But just because we're talking about the kesser and we're talking about this level of high high lights that are sort of like before the Yishtalshalus Ein ze tofis makam kol kach It's like it doesn't matter so much He writes in parentheses so much It doesn't matter that much that there's such a thing as people doing good and there's such a people th- do, as doing bad It's like when you, you go into those videos that show you like you're here on earth and they take you like like galaxies away and you realize that like you can't even dust. it's not even a speck of dust like you cannot make out the earth anymore and like it's just not that significant you know and that's just in this world you know it's still a physical world you go in, you can go into the billions of galaxies of spiritual galaxies and you can't make it out it's like non-existent thing so it's basically that's why there's no such thing as good and bad it's not because in, in, in intrinsically at that level there's no such thing as earth it's because you're so far away that you don't even know that it's there. You simply are not aware of it. So, so that's the level of a chashverosh. It's not a negation of the levels. It's just an... In, I don't care about the levels. What's tofes makom? Tofes makom is take up place. It's like they don't take up any place. They're insignificant. Right. What, what the, 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 uh, the, the concept of holiness and unholiness. Like the differentiation between unholiness and, far and holiness. It's insignificant. It's not that it's not ex- in existence, it's just completely insignificant. And therefore, you know, the mice will play, as it were. Right. And since it's completely in- in- insignificant, then there, no one's going to stop you if you rob a bank. Right? There's no law and there's no justice because the judge is completely not, he's not at work today. He went up to basically where he lives, where it's, it's, there's nothing going on in the world. And that's the idea of chash, <coughs> which is uh, of klipas noge, and rosh of gimel klipas atameas. And that's why suddenly the world is filled with achash verosh. That because evil can just like reign freely, because the level of godliness, which basically doesn't care about the world all that much, is, is, is accessed. But again, it's not... Here, let's just continue. He's going to say it inside. But Ad Shetia, he's Gavrus at Sitra Achor Al Kedusha, to the point that even the evil can easily overcome the, the holy side and make it basically swallowed up and silence it, right? Because for a very simple reason, it's much easier to rob a bank than to work very hard and become a big millionaire. So since the it's of no, there's no police on the street. So automatically chaos will reign over justice because justice requires everybody to be in the justice system. If you don't have police, you don't keep the order in the world, then order will quickly just get swallowed up by the lack thereof. And since there's no justice system in the world when you're dealing with the level of Hashaveros shining into the world, then, then they overcome Kedusha, no problem. 
And that's why Achashverosh was called Hushcharu Pneim Shel Yisrael. That the Gemara learns his name, not like this fancy thing that the beginning and the end was his, but that they, he darkened the Jewish people in his days. Achashverosh comes to the word black. V'yesh Lomar. Al Derech, and this is what we often, this is a concept that we speak about a lot often in Hasidus, it's called Shamamis V'yadayim Titfas V'hi Behech Melech. So it's, it's, a shamamis is like a lizard of some sort, <laughs> a little like house lizard. And it says, it says, you, it says a lizard, a little thing, you could, you could just grab it with your hands. It's so like nothing and insignificant. It's not like it's like a, like a lion in your house. And, and yet, nevertheless, it's, it's dirtying up the whole house. And it's, the melech, and it's in the king's palace. And you don't do anything about it. Wow. Even though it's dirtying up the palace. I don't know how dirty they get, but let's say it's a slimy one. It's going around making a whole mess, leaving who knows what, and no one touches it. Even though it's like a little tiny enemy that you could like flick away with your, with your finger. And why? Because the Melech is mamish busy running the country, or more than that, he's busy just like in his garden, occupied with his own unbelievable greatness. Of, he's the king of the world. He, he doesn't even put, his, put his, his heart on it to even care that it's there to kick it out. He doesn't basically clean house, because he doesn't care that the house is dirty, because it's a tiny little thing in his world. This is like the muscle of the king. He just lets evil reign, and that's what you were saying, Aleph. Like that's why pretty much the world looks like a Hefker place, because we're the 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 Stalschluss is not in order, and in place of it, the chaotic world reigns. And the chaotic world, it's it's actually a high thing, because the energy which is reigning is a Kesser. Remember, remember, if, if you go to the Stalschluss, everything has to be limited, everything has to be put in Kalim, and it's very and it's and it's like sort of like a a world of of lesser magnitude. But the problem is, we have so much energy, but it's all give it into the hands of the wicked. That's why like, there's such crazy control of people and you know, so forth. But, all that being said, it's not enough force of the evil lo lashmidam chas v'shalom. It cannot wipe out the Jewish people. It could just put us in a state of darkness and override us and be, no. be dominant over us and enslave us chas v'shalom. They can do whatever they want, but they can't wipe us off the face of the earth because it's still, it's still not completely beyond levels. It's just completely beyond caring about the levels. But it's so long as levels do exist in some faint part of the mind of this thing, then you can't undo, evil cannot undo good. Because it still holds a place. It's, that's, it's like it recognizes good and evil. Once you're recognizing good and evil, even if you're not doing anything about good and evil, how can you undo good and evil when you yourself are busy recognizing it? Right? This is basically, while it's putting it into existence, it can't simultaneously undo its existence. It's just that it ignores its existence, so it doesn't give it the upper hand. I'm sorry, and where is Hashem in all of this? These are levels of Hashem. This is a level of Hashem we're talking about. This king that we're talking about is God right. at a level where he's just too busy to care about the world. Because remember, there... That's gullus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because basically the Jewish people, in a large degree, we're not in control of ourselves. In other words, we're, <laughs> we're making decisions based on what the goyim want us to do, you know? So when we're praying, Hashem is, no, Hashem is not here? No, so when you're praying, basically, no. you're, when you attach yourself to Torah mitzvahs, then you, you, you amplify the light of the Yishtal Shalus. So that's when basically there's, that's why there's any justice and order and the, and the Jews are somewhat on top and getting stronger every day because the mitzvahs, you know, the Rebbe generation basically brought us back. So, I mean, the more mitzvahs and the more Torah, the more we basically channel the energy of the darkness into holy things. But until such time is like it's predominantly a mitzvah-doing world, so chaos is going to reign over order. And that's what's going on. Yeah. Chaos is reigning over order. And it's not just because like ISIS pops into the game or Iran. It's been like that since the destruction of the base, second base of Mikdash. We're not, and, and the proof of it is that the Jewish people are not in control of the world because we would put order to the world. And we're not able to put order to the world because the chaos runs the world. Everybody else like trying to steal our, our. They, not just our land, but each other's land and just kill everybody and basically take, you know, dominance. The, the way of ruling is to dominate everybody and take what's theirs. 
and, and be the king of the jungle till someone knocks you off the top. That's chaos. That's the spheros of tohu. They cannot exist simultaneously. We would love to exist simultaneously. All we want is our little piece and we'll give everybody <laughs> what they want. They won't let us because what rules the day is t- total domination and blurring the lines. Chaos. So, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, we have Baruch Hashem, a Rebbe, and we have a lot of holy people, and they're there to basically I mean, try to bring the Jewish people to our, you know, off of our knees, and, and we are, we're getting there. And Baruch Hashem, I think everybody sitting in this room is basically like a product of the victory of this effort. The, but the concept that everything that happens is through divine providence, that, that's still that's manifesting? Yes, it's manifesting, but. Yeah. Even so, on the contrary, divine providence is also evil happens with divine providence. It's not like he, so. In other words, when you say that he's he's not paying attention, he's paying attention, but he's paying attention in such a way where he what we experience, I guess, put it that way. What we experience is that he's not paying attention, right? In other words, it's not that he's not paying attention, and that's by the way, when you talk about divine providence, that what is divine providence, right? It's it's yeah. basically a it's a, it was a gift given to us to think about and recognize on a constant level by the Baal Shem Tov. It's a Hasidic concept. Wow. Not that people didn't always talk about Hashem having hashgacha over the world, but hashgacha pratis, first of all. I mean, it refers to every single leaf falling off a tree. You know how we talk about the Baal Shem Tov is famous for even a leaf rolling on the tree is Hashem. Well, why is that such a big deal? Because that is the greatest agency to put order back to a world of chaos. By telling the world and like breathing it into every person's mind and like making the Torah all about that, everywhere you go, you're like a little tikkun maker. Because you're like, no, 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 no. Everything is, Hashem is watching. You're basically like triumphing his, his stauschelus over every single man. You're saying, even though it doesn't look like it, it's really leading to his cause coming out, so it's going to ultimately be ju- justice and vindicated. That's work that we're doing to recognize the, the divine providence. To say that there's divine providence and to be aware of the divine providence are two very different things. If you're unaware of the divine providence, then so to speak, Hashem is unaware of his divine providence. You put him into a state where he's not so much paying attention because you're not so much paying attention. The Baal Shem Tov is giving us like this tool. Guess what? Pay attention to every single detail. It's all Him. That's how we turn the darkness into light. But it's not just Stam like that. It's an avoda to be Bahashkacha Pratis. That's our version of basically Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Samid. Place Hashem you before you always, which of course Jews always believed this. But the way we were trained to, to actually practice this was with recognizing divine providence. So I mean... We're not negating it, but when you're not recognizing the which is trust me, it's plenty. <laughs> you know, we're not always making the, the connections. So you're you're also then basically drawing on a level which is Hashem's also not watching the details. Providence. So we're in a state where we're being somewhat crushed to help us help us. Our Re- well, like we're being crushed because just that's the whole thing of the divine providence. If Hashem, God forbid, will come after us, so he, he wakes us up. He's like, he wakes us up from the dark side. In other words, since we're not doing the mitzvahs and we're not making order, he pushes us into a corner that we all suddenly have to like reveal our Jew in us and start doing mitzvahs like at an accelerated rate. But what the Rebbe is asking in that previous mimer is that we shouldn't have to wait till that situation. We should just recognize divine providence. And recognize that we're not seeing the whole glory of Hashem like work like clockwork and be motivated from just that fact. So, pro- 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 Providence isn't, doesn't equal, it's not a distinction between benevolence and hostility. It's, it's, it's a, it, in right. English, I don't know what it means in Hebrew. Like, no, I it's don't true know. also, yeah. It's, it equates to foresight. It equates to seeing the future as it is. Like, it's, it's like kind of like a, prophetic uh, ability but it's not it's not like saying oh yeah it's going to be all good like don't worry it's you're the children of Israel take care of you. no it's like i just just seeing the good and the bad in the in 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 advance and knowing and knowing what's going to happen that's all it means i so i I, knowing, I i like what you're saying a lot but i i would say i would say like this also so what you're saying is divine providence is basically the fact that everything is being conducted by Hashem doesn't mean it's good or bad. He can conduct the bad also. But when you... So that's, I hear you there. But here's the thing. Observing that, right? It's like the observer changes the... You know, and like the... Oh. When, you, when, when you observe that and you're like, oh, 
that that's happening right there is God doing that, you then basically do transfer it into a good. That is, or you make it good because if it's God that's doing it, it's good, even if it doesn't look good. You know, because so so you, that's what I'm saying. It's an avoda to see the hashkacha pratis, and as soon as you see it, you take it out of like the lottery hefker state that we were talking about in the beginning, and you put it into a state of order. Because like, oh, this is, and you're the little eyes of God on the ground, making God see the details, as it were. Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. You basically are his little messenger over here. You're pointing out that everything is him, and you're turning the tables on that. That was easy for Americans watching Obama be president. <laughs> Yeah, they picked it up, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Someone said to me last night that the real fear is what he's going to do after he's president. Thank God for Obama. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, let's see. We have no fear of, of that Obama man. Obama, I mean, he's, he's bringing the redemption. Okay. Thank God country. for Obama. So going on. So we're saying that therefore, Achash Verush's level, since it still recognizes good and bad, it just doesn't care about them, it's not, then, uh, that, then the powers granted to the Klippas are not sufficient to actually undo us, God forbid. They could just overcome us, but they can't undo us. And Haman wanted more. Yimach hmm. So after these little um, brackets, Right. He could not destroy us with that Achashverosh energy alone. Because when Haman sought to destroy actually all the Jews, that there would be no more Jews, it means like it was and it will never be. He peeled poor who So he's like, I'm going higher. I'm going to the poor, to the lottery. Because that is a place where Pasha, there's no such thing as good and bad. And if I get that, I can make it so there's no such thing as good. I can, it can be disappeared from the world. Uh-huh. Not just that it has a place that's overshadowed by darkness, but there is no more good. That's where he was going. Because in the lottery, there's no such thing as good or bad. Since at the level of the girl, the lottery, there isn't to begin with a chiluk ben kedusha l'sitra acha. There's already no difference between holiness and unholiness. It's so far beyond the world that Hashem didn't get around to even like making a separation at all. Right? It's like the first day that was before the separation. It was all day. And only then did He say, okay, night and day. Okay, waters, higher waters, lower waters. It was the tzimtzum, basically. It's like, so He like made distinctions. Before that level... There's no distinctions. Particularly according to what we said above, Sif, Gimel, and Dalit, that the Goral, who lo rak lamayla mishtal shlus, el lamayla gama ratzon de Torah mitzvahs. So now, we really can put all the pieces together. Because what we basically said, if you're following, is that the Goral is not only above Chochmah, but it's also above Keser. And we indicated that, we said it's not only above Hashem's name, the Yud, Kei but it's even above the crown on top of the Yud, which is the Keser, because it's entirely beyond the name, right? And we said that the, the crown was the Keser. So basically what we're just saying now is that being above the Ishtar, Seder Ishtal Shluz is like being above Chochmah, right? And at that level, you're in Keser. And Keser, yeah, Taki, it's above the Seder Ishtal Shluz. And if you're going to draw from there, the, the clip can undo you because there's because beginning and end are equal there, but it's th- but that's called the will, right? So in other words, when, when you have the will, if you think about it for a second, why is it that in the state point of the will, there's an equation of some level between good and bad? Because in order for Hashem's mitzvahs to be done, He needs to give, in a certain sense, He needs to give that ability for there to be something called good and bad. You can't do mitzvahs in a world where there's no, there's no options, you know, there's no distinctions. So, this, so since the Seder Ishtalshus is full on distinctions, even the source of the Seder Ishtalshus, which is the Kesser, which is the will of Hashem to have that Ishtalshus, it's obviously linked up with the Ishtalshus. It's the will for the Ishtalshus. So obviously, even though it's above the Ishtalshus, it can't negate the whole concept of the Ishtalshus. Well, it's busy being the will for that Ishtalshus. So therefore, and again, what is, the, what is the will that he actually has? It's a will which necessitates that there be good and bad in there. Right? Because he needs to have a justice system. You can't have a justice system unless it recognizes the difference between good and bad. So, so at that level, you really can't just completely go beyond. 
And what we're saying now is, and we said that before, that nonetheless, that's not the lottery. The lottery goes even above the crown of the Yud, which means it's beyond the will. And that's what we're saying now, that if you go outside of the whole will for the, for the, for the, for the creation, the will for Torah and mitzvahs even, so you're not even, so beyond the will, there's no need to have good, bad, anything. It's just, there's, there's not a project on the, on, on the board yet. There's just nothing, right? Yeah, it's like a sort of level of oneness with no distinctions have yet been made. It's pushed at a high place. And yeah, like you said, I mean, I know it was like kind of seemed like a random uh, thing. It was a little bit of Ruach HaKodesh. This is the Indian of Nadav and Avihu. Because this is the Indian of like getting drunk. You know, it's like Purim. Adalo Yada. It's a place of complete... You don't know the difference between Haman and Mordechai, right? That's what, that's what the, 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 the Halacha is. That's where we're supposed to like sort of wipe out a Malik. We turn the tables. He wanted to wipe out us. And here we're saying like we're going to wipe out evil from the world because we're going we're gonna to take that girl for ourselves. Actually, thank you very much. I like that spot. You know? But it's interesting that he was, he was the first one to push, push us there. Because he wanted to wipe us out. He wanted to, everyone's fighting for this spot where it's like total power because you can negate any distinctions. So if, those distinctions, if, if it belongs to you, you'll negate, you'll negate the, the distinctions okay. which are opposing you. If it belongs to the other guy, he'll negate the distinctions which are opposing him. So it's like this pr- place of like oneness, but who gets the oneness? <laughs> Paro, Good or bad. Paro, wasn't on that level. Paro was not on that level, actually. Paro <laughs> represents the... Uh, I mean, look, I mean, it depends yeah. what mimer you read, but in general we talk about Hamishi <laughs> Laparo. When it's Hamishis Leparo, when, when they were in the end of uh, Parsis Miketz over there, Vayigash, there's a whole story that Yosef just took everything. He took the land, he took the people, everyone was slaves to him, and they had to give him everything. So it says, like, basically, they had to give a fifth of everything to Paro. So Hasidus picks up on that and says, a fifth to Paro means Paro's the fifth. He's the fifth level. Oh. What's the fifth level? It's basically the Yechida, right? So maybe you could say it's, it's a similar thing that we're talking about right now. But, but in general, it could be, it could be. The truth is, is the way we're discussing it, I'm not going to say one way or the other. But the reason why I, I, I wanted to say no is because even the Yechida is merely a name of the soul. It's merely a name of the soul. It says the soul has five names, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, and Yechida. So the Yechida, although it's, it's the name which is united with Hashem, Still, there's something beyond that, which is the, like the Baal Haratzon, like we're saying, right? Okay, but whatever. I don't, I don't, let's think about Paro <laughs> some other day. <laughs> so he says, okay, so when you, the, he wanted the lottery, because the lottery goes even above the Ishtal Shluz, which is even higher than the will of Torah Mitzvah's Bichlal. They don't exist even in potential, not only in actuality. And therefore, he thought that through this, Throwing a lottery, accessing the level of lottery, he could lafik, he could attain as zamamo his plan. Little did he know. Little did he know. So he says like this: Vehine osches, kamo shegoro, who lemail masech v'lemail gam ratzon. Just like the lottery said is above intellect and it's also above will. Al derech ze hu benogei lebechira shulamayil mesecha v'lamayil gamir ratzon. All right, so we're wrapping it up here. All the answers are coming out. Amen. He says that just like lottery is above intellect and above will, there's one other thing that Hashem has in His arsenal, which is above intellect and above will. It's called choice. <laughs> serious oh. Choice. Oh. Free choice. It's an interesting thing. This is like you know, don't always get your hands on a mimer that like really brings you do a clear con- comprehension of what is free right. choice. But this is like one of the good ones. It's, it's, it, officially, it's one of the hardest things in the whole Torah to understand. Right. So he says, at this level, which is beyond intellect, and which is beyond will, reside seemingly two things, choice and the lottery. The kasher sikh, and where we see that it's pushed above choice, I mean above, excuse me, above intellect and above will, the kasher sikh lo mechayev shadavr ze roi livchorbo. Because when your intellect will necessitate that something is worthy of choosing. That's not called free choice. You don't, you don't exercise your choice, basically, when you, there's no reason to exercise your choice, when it's obvious that the cards are like stacked up against one side. It says, for example, the famous example, he brings it just in the footnote, so I'll say it. He says that basically when Hashem 
Bachar banu mikol ha'ami, v'nasan lanu es torasto. He chose us from all the nations. And, right? So he says, what do you mean he chose us? It, was, it uses the word choo, to choose, free choice, bechira. So it's a whole like, chapter in Tanya that explains that it doesn't mean that he chose like, the, the, our souls over their souls because there's no, there's not that called a choice. You can't, it's like if someone puts in front of you, like, you know, gold and, and you know, you know, scrap metal. Yeah, scrap metal. And he's like, choose. It's not called choice. And I'll be Torah. It's not called free choice. Because you, you have to choose the gold. It's it, your, 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 your necessity. No necessitated no, no, no to choice. choose the gold. It's, it's not called choice. Choice right. is when you have a choice to make. Right. Plus, it's st- the stuck there with the choice. We've all been in situations where our life, when you have to kind of make a choice, you're like, hmm. Now, you could flip a coin, or you could make a choice, right? It's, it's like that's the same place as the lottery, basically, right? So he says, so what does it mean Hashem chose us then? It means he chose our physical bodies. That, the, that, that from here you see how precious, this is a side point, but it's just amazing. You see how precious the body of a Jew is over his soul. Because when it comes to the soul, the soul does not have this thing about being chosen by God. It's just a higher level of divinity. But the body, which is normally would just be another piece of Gashmias, Hashem chose these bodies over these bodies, which externally are exactly the same, to put that soul into, and inside of the Jewish body, therefore, is this unbelievable level of the Bechira Chavshis of Hashem, and that's why ultimately the body is higher than the soul. Is that, the, is that in the Parsha this week, uh, wow. Parsha asks, can, we, can you make us above all other nations? It's in, it's in the Parsha. Niflinu. Is that, is that the part? Yeah. Um, that was, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely similar. I mean, Hashem had to choose there. But not necessarily, but I'll tell you why, because <coughs> that was basically asking that <coughs> he wouldn't give prophecy and rest his Shekhinah somewhere else, right? So I guess, no, I guess you're right. Though. That is called choosing, basically. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much accurate, right? That's basically, that was his choice. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it sounds good. So anyway, getting to this level of <coughs> of uh, of choice is that when there's something in the intellect, it's not called free choice, right? It's already something fitting to choose, so you don't have free choice. Here's another level. Even if you really want something and you don't even know why, right? You're just drawn to it in some kind of a weird way, you also don't have free choice. Because it's not a free choice. It's not like you're just presented with an option. It's like you're already drawn in even more so than the intellect. You're fully invested into this thing because you want it. That's also not called free choice. Right? And that wanting is a ratzon shalamayla mesecho, is a will which is above seicho. Humuchrach bezeh. You forced already. Ve'ein zeh bechira chavshi. So no, it's not forced. I mean, it's not saying that you're forced to do it, but you're not utilizing what you call your true power of free will because you don't need to. It's already, like, it's already in the pipeline, basically. You want that. You already know you want that. You don't have to choose it. It's clear present. So, so basically also, will is not, is basically reason to sort of block out the level of reaching to the free choice. Just like we said by Achashverus, the Kesser. It doesn't get you to a point of, of completely neg- like equalizing the playing field. It's, still, it's already leaning towards the existence of, of, of some one preference or another. And the Amis is in Abakhir, the true level of Bakhir therefore is Shabakhir Shalo, who lo mitzara seichel, the gam lo mitzara ratzo. That you're choosing not because it makes any sense to choose it, and not because you have any particular interest and will and desire to choose it. It's literally a free choice. It's just you're presented with two things that you don't have one over the other guiding you. Is there a difference between free will and free choice? No. Oh yeah, free will, free will no, it's kind of the same. Right? Because when we say free will, what we really mean is like you're free to put your will where you want. Right? Because ultimately when you choose, you make that your will. Right? It's true, but you know... We didn't have choice to come. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, yeah. 
And like I said, if we're really gonna start talking about free choice, we're gonna get into yeah. deep waters here. Wow. But let's just yeah. let's just let's just hear what the Rebbe wants to tell us, and then we'll talk about free choice as much as we want. God bless the Rebbe. Elishakach boche bechira chavshi. He says, so you don't have anything leading you, but you, that's kacha. That's what you choose with your free choice. Nothing is pushing you one way or the other. That's the real concept of free choice. And he says, okay, so it pretty much sounds like the goral, the chiluk bein goral ubechir. The difference between these two levels, which go, both go beyond intellect and will, is the kasha adamo se goro machlit. So when a person makes a lottery, flips a coin, he's machlit, he decides the kamo shi pila goral ken yiratsono. That however the lottery will turn out, I will put my will, and therefore my intellect and everything in that direction, I will let the lottery determine which way we're going. And therefore, he winds up being kind of like a robot to chance because he's putting his whole self in the hands of whatever this thing will decide. He chooses not to choose. It was in the place where you could have free will. He chooses, I don't want to make the, the decision. Right? This is very deep. I'm going to let fate determine my decision. It's not really a choice. It's not really a choice. It's a lottery. Right, right. So choosing, 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 choosing not to make a choice is basically right. not, it's not, it's not called choosing. No. Right, that's the whole point we're saying. Like, you get to get up and vote, you know? If you just say like, okay, like I'll just like sort of flip a coin, it's, it's, you're choosing to flip a coin, but what you're basically choosing is to let someone else vote for you, the coin, which is a high level. You get to a point where you, you, if you could choose yourself, either beside from the standpoint of intellect or the standpoint of interest in a particular party, Democrat or Republican, you just want to, then you wouldn't have a free choice. You just, you're just you registered Democrat. <laughs> you don't have a free choice. You've already determined that your will is in this side. But if you're not a registered anything, so then you have two, two levels. You can either flip a coin and allow fate to determine because you have no other way, or you can choose. That's a deep thing. You can actually decide from, for no reason one or the other. It's kind of like the lottery. It's just that you're the cause of the lottery, not some outside factor. It's funny that kids love to do that. They love to have that point Because we're all basically running, we're all kids, and we're all running away from making choices. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he says that the... He says, so, so in the case of the lottery, it's not you deciding, it's that you're letting the lottery decide for you how your will, your will, will be. Bechira, on the other hand, is that the Adam who abocher, you actually choose. You are the chooser. You're the source of the lottery, basically. In other words, it's deep. You're not leaving it up to fate. You're leaving it up to yourself, some like intrinsic part of you which does not have any reason to be pulled one way or the other. You're going you're gonna to just determine that it's here. And from this, we, it, it's basically a proof that that Bechira is above a, the Gora. In other words, it's, they're not equal. Look, they only look equal. The Gora who had darda benefesh shmi mukderes umuchreches bize sheshnei advarim hem shavim lagaba. Because what is the Gora there? For, it, the Gora has a certain limitation. That choice does not have. That's why one is higher than the other. The, 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 limita- the goral is a level of the soul that you're limited in the fact that you have a certain limitation. Everything's equal by me. And that's a problem because it doesn't allow me to go right or left. I'm like basically at this, I'm like sort of, it's a high, high thing. Where basically something is in a state of existence where it does not even pull my will, let alone my intellect. But at the same time, I am now limited by that very power. Because I don't know what to do. And therefore, I'm going to hit the lottery, which is, going to, which is basically going to... I'm, I'm limited by the fact that two things are equal to me. And it puts me... It, it, in other words, right there, I'm reliant now on this, on this force that it's going to just take me wherever it wants. I can't even choose. Right? It's going to have to be, I can't even choose. I'm, re, I'm stuck. Whereas the Bechira is that, that you get to that same place and you don't have that limitation. You can choose, right? You're, you're, you're going to take like control of that situation and not let it be a limiting factor which makes it that you don't know where to go and have no way of determining that, which is what the lottery basically solves for you. In this case, you just dig down inside and you determine in a place where everything's equal which one you're going to choose. And that's like all of a sudden you that's doing it. And it's an unlimited place because you're now not limited by the fact that two things are equal. 
You take control of the fact that two things are equal and you exercise your power even in a place where two things are equal. Whereas a lottery means you, you surrender your power when two things are equal. Choices that you render your power when two things are equal. And you have the power to choose what you want. That's a very deep thing to think about. And what is your choice based on when it's totally... Uh-uh. Where is that coming from? So that's what we're getting to, basically. It's not... There's an essential you when it comes down to it. And it's not based on what you want. It's, a, it's based on what you are. You are. Yeah. You are. In other words, it says in the Torah, Hashem is giving you free cho- choice, and He says, choose the right choice. <laughs> Which means that at a certain level, it's like choose good, choose life. And if you rely on the Goral, then what, where's that choice coming from there? You're not making a choice. You're refusing to access the essential you. It's like if, you, if you're looking for guys, you take there's a whole bunch of secrets, and you just pick one out. Right? And you open it up, and that's your answer. People do this, right? Okay. So where is that? When that when you open it up to a certain page, that gives you the answer that you're looking for. Where is that? Is that like Goral? All right. Well, there's there's certain people that say that are that are very against that, because I'm not against it. I'm I'm just saying I want to point out I want to point something out because there's something called Tamim Tia Mashem Elokecha. Be like innocent and pure with Hashem. You're not allowed to go like ask some like you know hand reader and stuff like this you're not we're not allowed to like poke around with like trying to get answers from uh from luck you know from like my stick fell to the right so i'm going to go on this trip today that's like pashit usr it's a, it's a mitzvah lo sase so you can't do that that's not what you're doing right when these all these i, I do it also you're not that's not what we're, you're doing you right so it's something else basically that's just like basically saying that hashem is the one in the world with hashkacha pratis i need guidance and you're basically, it's like going to like the Orim Batum and say, Hashem, guide me. It's a place where there's guidance. And by the way, doing what it says, right, is not just because it says so, right? It's basically like, it's like a, in my, in my understanding, because, you know, you have to be, you could, do, you could be a maniac and just pick up a book and do what it says in there. It says, you know, the Rebbe says, you know, good luck in Pittsburgh. <laughs> so that's it, you're packing up, Go you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you have to be very careful. That's not, not really, it's not really just the lottery. In terms of choosing the book, you're, you're relying on somewhat of a lottery. So you're accessing this level of the lottery, which is cool, but you're not letting the lottery make your decision for you. You do this with the mashpia, and you've anyway, like, basically have, like, a whole list of, like, things that are weighing you in one direction or the other, and you just need a little bit of divine intervention to, like, clarify in your mind what you really should choose for yourself. It, it's just a way of, like, unlocking your free choice. I would say the concept of tapping into the lottery there is not, is not a small thing. You're going, you're like... I need to go beyond, basically. But it's not like you're just relying on the lottery. You're relying on the lottery to a certain point that you're going to get this book. But it doesn't mean that that's going to make your decision for you per se. And if it does, again, you, you have to like, see a doctor, not just a rabbi. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll hold here. But we're just about to crack it open. Tell, tell me something. When we hit the lottery, right? You can say, I want to shoot... This is a question. I want to choose the will of Hashem, not my will. Meaning, you're choosing your Hashem's will over your will. Or, I'm choosing, I want to do Hashem's will the way He commanded Moses. So really, we're choosing that we want to do Hashem's will, but really we're leaving it up to Hashem to show us His will, right? Or is that a, would that, or would that be leaving it to the lottery? Choosing order over chaos. I'm, ch- I'm choosing Hashem's will, although... I might not know because my will is very strong. My body, like you said, is very holy. Right. My body wants something different than what Hashem wants at all times. So by saying I'm going to choose, is that is that leading to the lottery? Is that choosing? Is that free will? That I think is what allows you to, to make a choice because you have like such like a, you have basically a compelling, you have a will for this and you have a will for that. That makes sense. So so yeah, you have yeah. two wills inside of you. Right. So basically. It's, you don't have, the will alone is not a determining factor because you have two wills. So you basically, that's why you're always left with free choice because you have a Nefesh Bahamas, basically. So that is choosing. So that's, it is a level of choice. It's not a lottery. What? Like, no, because you have to Same decide way. which will to go with. Or you could leave it to the lottery, but that's, then that's basically, that's called like, uh, 
you know, not being pure with Hashem. Like, we're going to literally flip a coin whether I should eat this right. piece of meat or not eat this piece, which I go with the, God forbid, the will of the Nefesh of Hamas, the nef- will of the Nefesh of the So that's a very low level of clip of this. It's the lottery of Haman, not the lottery of uh, Okay, so that is Hashem. So it is still a level of choice, even if you're giving it to Hashem. Still, you're choosing the will of Hashem. When you say giving it to Hashem, you do the mitzvah? Yeah. Yeah, because you're not, you have a, you have a choice to make regarding that. This is not yeah, order of chaos, because No, the only reason I ask that is because when you say a lottery, you want to choose, right? Oh, God.